Hello there. Today we will be discussing how we'd go about working on proprietary CATIA data from within our best friend, SOLIDWORKS. Previously, it might have seemed impossible to work on data not native to SOLIDWORKS without requesting a neutral format be sent over. Even in these situations, we find ourselves in a standstill, waiting on the owner of the data to confirm any changes, consistent unnecessary communication, confusion, issues with tolerances, and more. Well, no more will we find ourselves scratching our heads or reaching out to that one designer that never seems that interested in talking to us. We have 3D Interconnect. So what is 3D Interconnect? 3D Interconnect utilizes enhanced translators and workflows to expedite performance and enhance quality when handling third-party CAD data, offering some pretty awesome capabilities. Things like direct insertion of proprietary CAD data into a SOLIDWORKS assembly without requiring conversion to a SOLIDWORKS file, seamless access to proprietary 3D CAD formats within SOLIDWORKS software, maintaining an associative link to the original part. Option to update changes made to proprietary CAD data in its authoring application within the SOLIDWORKS file, preserving all downstream features created in SOLIDWORKS. Optional disassociation from the inserted part file from the original part file when necessary. So who has access to 3D Interconnect? Well, here's the thing. 3D Interconnect as a tool is available on standard, professional, and premium CAD packages. But we're here today to talk about using this tool with CATIA specifically. That being said, the ability to actually use 3D Interconnect on CATIA files is limited to premium only. Unless, of course, you purchase SOLIDWORKS after the July 1st, 2023 changes, then you gain access to the UES role on the 3D Experience platform, which does allow any CAD package to take advantage of 3D Interconnect for CATIA data. Contact your local VAR to find out if you have access to this role. All right, let's get started. First thing we need to do is make sure 3D Interconnect is actually on. We're going to head up to our Options, System Options, Import, general, and make sure enable 3D interconnect is in fact on. Next, what we're going to do is pretend that we're a supplier for a much larger company, and they've sent us some CATIA V5 data that we need to bring into SOLIDWORKS to work on. Next, what you're going to see is, do you wish to run import diagnostics on this part? I'm going to click yes, but I need you to be aware that when we are in fact linked, we are unable to use the import diagnostics tool. Something you can do is come through here through the gaps between faces options and find these specific gaps and fill them in yourselves. But we do not have the option to heal everything automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Let's have a look at our tree. If we expand the CATIA V5 part, we have 13 surface bodies, 13 solid bodies, and one plane. There are some visuals within our tree that make it really simple to understand that you are, in fact, working with a 3D interconnected part. Over the thumbnail for the part that we brought in, we have a green arrow pointing to the left. We also have a dash and a greater than sign letting us know that there is an outside reference. If you did happen to want to use the import diagnostics tool, remember, all you have to do is break the link. You can do this by right clicking on the component and selecting break link, which just so happens to be another good indicator letting you know that there is in fact a link to this component. So we've received this part and we need to do a little bit of work. I'm gonna begin by creating additional configuration to make these changes in. Now that we're in this new configuration, we will primarily be working on this fourth rib located right here. And since that's the case, we're going to go ahead and hide all of the other components that we don't necessarily need in our view. Now that everything's hidden, let's go ahead and zoom in on our part. All right, so we need to create through holes for these stringers to run through from end to end of the wing and going through each of the ribs. So I'll first start by extracting a zero millimeter offset of the stringers. From here, what I'll do is cut this rib through hole using the cut with surface command from the surfacing tools. Just to confirm, we did in fact create a through hole for that stringer. 
All right, so we're officially finished with the edits we planned for. So we're done, right? Not so fast. Let's head over to Katia and pretend to be the original designer of the wing. We decided it was necessary to make a last minute change to the data. The change we'll be making is a modification to one of the stringer's diameter. Face value, this is a pretty simple change, but when we are working with outside suppliers that constantly require updated data, this can be a challenge without 3D Interconnect. Heading back over to the SOLIDWORKS data we've been working on, we can now see a change in visuals in our Feature Manager design tree. Pay close attention to the 3D interconnected part. Instead of only a green arrow on our connected part, we now see a recycle symbol. This visual is letting us know that the native CATIA data has been altered, and we need to perform an update to see what's changed. When this symbol shows up, all we have to do is right-click and update the model. With these new updates, we notice some issues with the newly sized stringer. Our through holes on the rib are being affected. Using a direct editing tool called Move Face, we will be able to reposition these holes so they aren't interfering with the modified stringer. I'd like to have a look at the Feature Manager design tree for a second. If we utilize the rollback bar, we can temporarily suppress the features we've added within SOLIDWORKS. This is a good way to visualize what we've done to the model since accessing the native data. None of these new features are affecting the native CATIA data at all. This is strictly on our end. And lastly, once we've finished our modifications, we can export this new rib as a DXF and send it over to the water jet and proceed with further testing. Thank you so much for watching this video on working with CATIA data within SOLIDWORKS. For more information, please visit us at hawkridgesys.com.